Hey guys, welcome back to Rule the World. Now we're going straight into rebuilding the castle this episode. Last episode I took a look around uh, the princess's castle and, uh, and I had a fish around and a poke around and I also rolled the dice of fate and you remember we got some cool stuff from that but this time I want to go straight into building the castle so let's do it. Now the first thing I'm going to start building is the tower on the right. Now this is a really cool tower. I like the effect of the chiseled cobblestone. Really do love that kind of dark grey against the light grey of the stone brick. And the first thing I need to do is work out what kind of altitude and what kind of heights we're going to have for this tower. So using the magic wand I built up with that dark grey chiseled cobblestone. And then once I was at the level I was happy at, I wanted to bring the other tower to the same level. So I built over with a, a kind of a column, a horizontal column, of wood. And then once those two towers were at the same level, it was time to start decorating this tower. And when I say decorating, I don't really mean decorating, but more like detailing. You see, if you were going to decorate a building, I suppose you'd add a bit of paint uh, and some fancy decoration. But in truth, the best decoration you can add to a functional castle is really more a kind of just like functionality to it. So what I did was I built these kind of uh, large corners, reaching up corners, because I wanted a very kind of, not really an aggressive tower, but I definitely wanted the look and feel of strength and power in these towers. So these are definitely towers of power. And then it was time to start thinking about the main tower at the back. Now again, this is going to remain square. Uh, I wanted to change the corners to wooden logs, but I also wanted to give the back of the tower a bit of decoration and bracing. So I again used dark cobblestone as a way of adding functionality in bracing. So it's a stronger structure for the dark cobblestone. But also I wanted to add the dark cobblestone because I like the look of it. And it definitely contrasts against that white gray, like I've said. And again, adding kind of bracing against the wall, not just the edges and corners of oak wood, and dark cobblestone, but to add more detail to this build, what I also wanted to do was put in the dark cobblestone leaning against the large square tower as a kind of support. And I put again reverse chevrons this time, V's pointing upwards on the back and sides of the tower. I didn't need to do the front because that's where the door's going to be, and there's going to be plenty of decoration there to make it look nice and different, so we don't need to worry about that too much. And it was time as well to kind of make sure I had the height right on this middle tower. I want it to be roughly about as high as the towers on the outside. I don't want there to be too much difference. If I make it too high, I'm gonna have a lot of difficulty uh, actually, actually filling the place up. I mean, a man's castle only needs to be so big, and I've only got so much furniture, especially at the moment. I mean, what else can I wanna put in here? I've spent this whole series making an entire kingdom village that has everything I need all around. We've got storehouses, blacksmiths, uh, farms, a Batania setup, all the things I've ever wanted in my kingdom have all had their own buildings. So having my own castle is great. It's a great statement of power and wealth. And when I entertain guests, I can always bring them back here to, to have them hang out. But the truth is, there's not much for me to actually fill this place up with. Apart from a bed and a few places to store things, there's not really much reason for me to add much at all to this castle. So I want to keep it kind of minimalist. But at the same time, I do want it to be a reflection of how awesome the kingdom has become and how much materials I've kind of gathered. It needs to be a symbol of material wealth. And that's what I think it is. With this amount of cobblestone and stone brick, I definitely put out the message that, hey, this guy has a pickaxe and he knows how to use it. Now for the roof of the square tower, I wanted just this plain old peaked roof. I wanted to mix it up a little bit though, so I added a tower in the middle of that roof that reaches out the same way we have at the church and at the town hall. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Again, a lot of the things that you see me building here are things I'm going to come back to, have a think about, and then change the bricks. You're never locked into anything with Minecraft. If you build the wrong material, if you think, hang on a sec, I'd rather have the edges and the corners of this building be logs instead of bricks, then you're only a heartbeat away from just coming back, digging them out with a pickaxe, and returning it to like a kind of oaky kind of log effect. And that's what you'll find that I've done for a lot of the buildings and, uh, and details 
on this castle is I've come back after the fact and changed a few materials here and there just to achieve a better different look. And now again I wanted massive windows at the front of this castle. So what I've done is I've used white and green panes of glass to create a white and green checkered pattern on the window. It makes it look very stained glassy. And I've also added a flower box in the front. I've used fertilized dirt that I've made from bone meal, zombie brains, and, uh, and another couple of things. And then I put some red flowers in the middle just to make it look a bit, you know, colorful, splash a bit of color around. And there we have it. It's, it's very almost finished. There's a couple of changes that I need to make here and there. We've got the really cool tall peaked roof at the top that leans up like a spire. And we have a few other things that look pretty swish too. There's definitely a few changes that need to be made. And I do definitely need to, need to fill it up with furniture and other bits and bobs, personal effects, things like that. But for the time being, I'm really happy with how this castle's turned out. So now it's time to go in game and I can give you guys a tour first person. All right, welcome back then, guys. Now you saw me build the castle. Ah, oh, it looks really cool, actually. As I'm coming to it from the storehouse and over here by the town hall, it's just such an impressive, imposing presence. You can't quite see Eldrifin's Sky Tower anymore. That's hidden behind my back towers. But oh, just, just the feeling of size and power and dominance that I get when I walk around this castle, it's pretty cool. It's not quite as big as Blackwood's castle, but let's face it, he was a bit of a pretentious D-bag. So we don't need to pretend to be him anymore. I'm really happy with how big this is. It looks really cool. This is the fence. Now I'm gonna go around the back of the castle and show you what's there because, oh, it's a bit bare bones at the moment. I mean, look at all these flat surfaces. This is kind of ugly. And we can come back and we can fix this up, touch this up and make the place look a bit more detailed. A few changes need to be made. Like, oh, look, there's a stairway right there that's just out of place. I've emptied my pack, but we can definitely fix that. There we go. And there's going to be all kinds of things there that need to be changed. Like for one, I altered the design. The design on this bridge over here is a little bit different to the design on this bridge over here. You can see this one reaches out a bit further and goes right the way to the corner of the bridge. But this design over here doesn't quite do that. And we've got a different design here on the corner. But what I might do is I'll come back and I'll extend this support so that it comes out to the edge and goes a little bit further down. And I'll fix that up as well. There's no windows on the back of the castle, and that's gonna change. And these doorways right here, they look a bit drib drab as well. We've got a floor here with a big gap in it, whoops. But as you can see, the whole place is very, very dark. So bad guys are definitely gonna spawn in here. And again, like I said, these towers, oh my God, it's so dark. But these towers are gonna be a kind of staircase, a way to get up to the main bits of the castle. I might even put a lift in there. If you can think of any cool ways for me to travel up and down a tower, make sure you put them in the comments section. Ladders are the most efficient way, but I don't like using ladders because what kind of a king climbs a ladder to get to his bedroom? No king that I know. I filled in these, uh, these skylights as well with, uh, with stained glass and they look pretty cool and they provide a lot of illumination for the main hall. But again, like I've said, the inside, the interior of this tower is so dark. It's a bit of a dangerous place, actually. I'm a bit worried a creeper might come and blow me sky high. Got our banner here. Our colors build and grow. But again, oh, I should probably add some of my banners that I have lying around on little bits of the castle. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and find my banners and see if I can splash a few around to add some heraldry to this place. I need to make sure people know that it's my castle. But also what I'm going to do is in the main hall, I'm going to have uh, the banners and heraldry of lords that are allied to me. Now, Duncan's an ally, so I guess I can find like a banner that suits him, maybe like a purple and pink one, because he's gone a bit kind of fluxy. But let's see if I can find my banner scroll. Now, I've summoned a few Gaia Guardians. There's one number left to get on the Dice of Fate. Uh, but I'd have to kill this thing a lot of times and have to get really lucky to get that number. I was really lucky, honestly, to, to get five separate different numbers. The last number that I don't have is the food, the, the fruit of Grisea, which gives me infinite food. And while that sounds like the perfect, uh, the perfect tool for me, because I'm always forgetting to eat, at the same time, I've just got so much food on my person now, it feels like a bit of a waste, a bit of a pointless artifact. Let's take a look. Where did I put my bag of holding? 
Aha, there we are. Now, do I have my banner in here? Let's take a look. There we go. Heraldic scroll. And I've got a few heraldic wall banners. Now, how do I make these? Oh, it's just an iron ingot, some wool, sticks, and wood. No sweat. Let's use my Eye of Flugel to go back to Libra, which is the storehouse. Oh man, I love that thing, it's so good. Right, so this mod is called Craft Heraldry. So let's see what else there is in Craft Heraldry. There is a standing banner, a wall banner, and I don't know what that is. Well, all right, I thought there'd be more big banners for me to put down, but it looks like the only one is this size. That's fine though, let's take a look at it. Now we should probably get some, some standard freestanding banners. So let's make a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now I'll need to make some more sticks and I'll make some heraldic wall banners now. And we can make 16 of these. Now this should be plenty to splash around, so let's go and decorate the place with a few banners. See how these look. Now what does a freestanding banner look like and what would it look like on my gates? That looks pretty good actually. But, do I have to use my scroll on it as well to get the right design? Done. That's my, that's my crest. Do I have to dig these up now again and put them down? Let's try it. Oh, that's weird. What happens if I left click? Right click? Well, that's what the heraldic editors, editor says. Do I have to hold shift? Oh, this is odd. What happens if I put down a wall banner? And then right click it with the scroll. There we go, that works. Aha, now it works. There we go. I think we're gonna take away the ones on top of the roof here because we don't need those. But these do look pretty swish. So let's plonk a few along these walls as well. Actually, no, I don't think we need any on the fence, but we definitely need some on the castle. So we'll put a couple there. Oh yeah, looking good. And now I prepared a space here for one, especially. Oh, beautiful. And now on the corners here, we'll put down some freestanding ones. Oh, that looks beautiful. And what I can do is I can go around and splash some of these on the rest of the building. In fact, let's put a couple up here. Probably gonna add some more windows in, I think. But there's definitely room up here for a couple of banners. Oh, beautiful. Build and grow. Yeah, oh, and that splash of color actually really does stand out. Really picks out the edges and the corners of the build. Oh, look, and it looks like Sips is enjoying the garden. Well, I guess he's got nothing else to do. He's probably walking around thinking, hey there, there used to be a mine here. I used to be a quarry guy. Now I'm just sitting around in a garden. What am I doing here? Well, I don't know, Sips. We'll find you a job sooner enough. Don't worry. But that's a good point. We need to find a job for him, for Honeydew. I think Honeydew is he's probably still sleeping with his sheep, like, like Master Gibbs in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, there he is. Oh, God, he's going to be filthy by now. I don't know where Parvis has gone. He's probably playing a gig. And Lewis, I don't know where Lewis is either. Is he in here? There we are. Well, that's at least all of the NPCs tracked down. Oh, looks like we have a problem. Oh no, they've run out of food. That means somebody isn't doing their job. I think Benji must have been backed up. Ah, and I think that ha- Oh, there's a dolly there. I think that happens because the storehouse is in a bit of a, a, bit of a state of disrepair. At the moment, yeah, because we've got, I think, oh yeah, look at this. We've got 131,000 pieces of food. Holy crap sticks, including 20,000 cooked fish, 17,000 raw salmon, lots and lots of cooked steak and pork chops, some puffer fish, they're kind of useless, potatoes, 12,000 wheat, no way, but only 77 apples, and 9,000 seeds. Well, we can definitely find a use for seeds. I think we can probably turn them into seed oil and make them into fuel. But I don't know, we're gonna have to have a think about what we're gonna do with our excess food. 
Now, this isn't Feed the World. If it was, though, man, I'd be well on my way there. But let me know, guys, in the comments section what, we, what you think we should do with our extra food. But also, don't forget to put what you think we should be putting in the castle. What kind of rooms? I'm going to get building some furniture. Uh, and then maybe next episode we can, we can hit up the castle and decorate the place with some fancy, fancy furniture. But until next time, guys, I've been Shin, and this has been Rule the World. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for some more action. We'll maybe take a poke around the kingdom, maybe decorate my castle. And we mustn't forget as well, we've got to get on the way to, uh, to getting the last pieces of the, uh, of the parts of the god. We've got her head, we've got Renzovia's head, but I think the next part was buried in Alfheim, and to do that, we have to kill Elwyn Sorosong. And of course, uh, Princess Eldrafin needs to be put back on her seat of power. And uh, we, need to, we need to take care of that evil elven lord. So until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>